Welcome to Hard Questions, where we tackle the tough issues of the day and answer them right out of the Bible. I'm the moderator and host of this panel today, and on the panel, Dr. William Glaze from Bethany Baptist in Pittsburgh. Amen. Pastor Lee Kreisner from Amplified Church in Pittsburgh. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Pete Jagalone, I got to say it like that, uh, from McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Amen. And our special guest, Rabbi Daniel Lappin from the American Alliance for Jews and Christians not in Pittsburgh. Uh, fair to say. Fair to say. Right. Well, here, here we are to take the questions mm -hmm. that you sent in. And our whole purpose for this program is to be able to present to you uh, answers that you may not have access to in your regular life. So here we are with the hard questions panel. Go to the first question. Here we go, mm -hmm. guys. Is it okay to indulge in the luxuries of life? Well, you know, I, I think it's okay to have things as long as things don't have you. And, you know, you look at the Bible, uh, Joe, you know, he was very wealthy. Abraham was very wealthy. So, you know, I don't think that God condemns, you know, the luxuries and having things. It's just that when you uh, have the wrong perspective and they grab your heart and you start becoming greedy and, and, and your personality becomes uh, negative and sinful, I, I think at that point it becomes a problem. Spencer Cross. Well, it's amazing that we have a, an author of one of the finest books in America with us because his book has given me greater respect for money than ever, ever, ever before. And, and I think the greatest thing I can share with other people is from your book, the integrity of money. You can have things, and as Doc said, as long as things don't have you, that they don't become our act of worship. Right. So if you want to drive a nice car and you can afford it, drive that nice car and, and don't be ashamed of it. But if you can't afford it and go after right. it, you know, again, it comes back to, I, I really, Really respect the book that you wrote. It Thank was, you, Pastor. Well, I mean, we got to say the title of the book. What's okay. the title of the book? Thou shalt prosper. Thou shalt prosper. <laughs> right. Uh, thank you very much. I was wondering, like, is it going to be left to the only <laughs> Jew here to promote the book? Like, you guys are talking about money and luxuries, and I'm trying to sell books. You know? <laughs> well, you've got a follow-up book to that. Even, I so. do. Business secrets from the Bible, but uh, we'll have well, we'll have time in the future. Let's to talk give about you those. that question. What, yeah. what about luxuries in life? Well, look, um, the the key thing I think about this in the Bible is uh, the teaching from Deuteronomy chapter 15. Mm where uh, within the, the, the juxtaposition of just a few verses, you've essentially got God saying, you know what? There's never going to be an end to poor people. Right. And then a few verses away it says, you know, you follow this covenant, there'll never be any poor people. Come on, God, make up your mind, which is, you know, which, which is it? And the ancient Jewish wisdom explains the Hebrew text very clearly, and it, it reads beautifully. It's very, very simple. It's that you have to realize that you must never view yourself as poor. You know why? Because there is no definition of poor. And anybody mm. who thinks that Donald Trump doesn't go to bed at night gnashing his teeth about Bill Gates doesn't understand human nature. Oh. Mm. Poverty is and wealth are relative. And so mm. God is saying you may never view yourself as poor. How dare you identify your personality mm. by the value of your bank account? On the other hand, you always should look at people who have less because you owe an obligation to right. them. Mm. But you're not poor. So in other words, there will always be poor. Don't worry, that you'll always have people to give something to. But, there will, but the poor will vanish if you follow the covenant because you'll learn not to see yourself as poor. So um, wealth and poverty are very, very relative. And so, for instance, when the government or politicians use phrases like the rich don't pay their fair share, guard your wallet. Guard your wallet. Because they're not defining rich. And here's the best part of it. In the Lord's language, there is no word for fair. So mm -hmm. much so. And I, look, I don't know, like, does the angel Gabriel teach babies in utero the word fair? Like, my kids never went to school. We had homeschooling, and yet... They were three years old and we were here, it's not fair, mommy. Like, who taught you that word? <laughs> but there is no word like that in Hebrew, so much so that in Israel, little kids in Israel come out of the womb saying, zeh lo, meaning in Hebrew, this isn't, zeh lo, and then they have to revert to the English, zeh lo fair. Because <laughs> there's no word in Hebrew for fair. Because what is fair? It's undefined. Fair is as much of your money as anybody wants to take away. Because you've got to give fair. So... Luxury is, for me personally, um, having a boat isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. 
but obviously to many, many, many other people, they look at me and say, <laughs> Lappen's into luxuries. You know, it's a, it's a different thing. Pastor Lee, what do you say? Well, if you are blessed to be able to, you know, we, we went through the seventh game of the Stanley Cup recently series, series and we were able to do it. And so if you're blessed to be able to do it, as long as it doesn't compromise a generous spirit. Right. And so to me, if you're generous and you're blessed, yeah. then you can enjoy those blessings but it should spark greater generosity, not less. You have to give in proportion to your luxuries. Exactly. Yes. Right. Well, then right. why is it so that many Christians feel convicted, if not condemned, or if they have anything that's nice because they think somebody's going to look at them and judge them, I suspect. Why is it that way? I think in the pastorate, I'm very cautious. I, I, um, especially pastoring in the inner, inner city, uh, perception is everything. Perceptions. Of, matter of fact, some of the jewelry I have on today was, was was inherited, and this particular ring sat in a safety deposit box for many, 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 many years. And I thought, you know, nuts to this. This is a memory of my father. I didn't buy it. The church didn't pay for it. And uh, I just said, why should it sit there? I, I, and this is the first time I've, I think I've ever worn it on air. Um, and I told my congregation the first time I wore it a couple of weeks ago. I said, you know what? Please don't judge me. This is a memory of my father. Well, can, I, can I say? Sure. Yeah. You know, one of the things uh, growing up in the African American church that I've always heard about pastors is that they, they drive Cadillacs. You know, and yeah. and so that's kind of taken like a negative turn. And uh, so I drive a Cadillac. So I just want to I, I just want to say that <laughs> you're a pastor. But, but, Take yeah, yeah, and I'm a pastor too. <laughs> but but you know, one of the things that I that I looked at is that you know you got to look at your season. You know, when my kids were growing up you know, there was a lot of finances and resources that yeah. went to them. Yeah. And, and my season was to drive these broke down hoopties that, you know, <laughs> that, 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 that you hope made it to the next place, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and now that my kids are, are grown and out, uh, you know, I, I just look at, and again, I'm not into the prosperity theology, but I just look at it's my season that, you know, God has blessed me with the financial resources right. to be able to uh, drive a Cadillac. So, you know, I enjoy it. And regardless of what people think, you know, I, I'm, I've been blessed by the Lord in, in this season that I'm in right now. See, the culture indoctrinates people to believe that having money is evidence that you have been bad to other people. It's not so true. It's evidence yeah. that you are a function of greed. Mm -hmm. Now, in Judaism, having money is evidence that you have served God's other children. Mm because we believe that right. if you're not holding up convenience stores or defrauding mm -hmm. people or, mm -hmm. or robbing little old ladies, the only way you get money is when another human being voluntarily gives it to you because whatever you did for them was worth more, otherwise they wouldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. So we look at a dollar bill as a certificate of good performance. That, good. that money proves I served God's other children. Mm. And so Amen. enjoy that Cadillac, brother, you Amen. deserve it. <laughs> That's good, the way we view what money is is how we uh, then decide whether it's good or not. Right. Sometimes it feels like we think money is bad. It's the love of money. I know, and, I know and that's again, what the scripture yeah, says. And going, again, again, going back to Rabbi's book, it just, it, as, I, as I've perused it and looked into it, it, it just really gives you a, a, a real good biblical uh, integrity of, of what money is all about. And it's not for it to worship me or me to worship it, it's just a tool. Well, and, and, and if I could add uh, to that, you know, as far as, you know, giving, you know, I, I not only give to the church, but there's about three or four ministries outside my church. You know, mm -hmm. one of the ones, and right I here. would encourage everybody <laughs> yeah. to give the Cornerstone oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. ministry. You know, right I, I give the Cornerstone every that. month. And you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, it, th there's a poem that I, that I heard somebody say a long time ago. There was a man, they thought him mad. The more he gave, the more he had. And, and, you know, when you, when you think about, you know, giving, and we don't give, we, you know, we don't try to bribe God or, no, you know, like a slot no, machine. No. But when you are faithful in giving to God, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, he makes sure that you have what you need. And he, he blesses you, you know, over and above. So, you know, I just, I think that, you know, if your heart is right and you give, I think good things will come back to you. You know, when I gave my heart to the Lord, I lost everything. I, I, my father had money, so when I got saved, my family disowned me. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, they, they said, Petey, when you were drinking, we could understand you, but now <laughs> you, you, you're not drinking, and you want to talk about M Messiah, you want to talk about Yeshua HaMashiach, and they look at me like, you're nuts, you're out of your mind. 
But you know, that was the greatest thing they could ever done for me because I, I came to know him as Jehovah Jireh out of my, out of nothing. I, I, I went to nothing. And you know what, from that day to this day, I can truthfully say, Jeho Jehovah Jireh is not a theological thought. Mm. It's, it's an everyday life occurrence. Amen. He has become my provider. And uh, I am glad that I lost everything to find everything. And then for Elaine and I, like all of us here, when we got married, we had nothing. Everything we owned was in our car. We did not have anything to our name. But again, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then don't be ashamed. Again, we have a, a good friend and he gave me some of his suits. And when I wore those suits to church, people would come up and feel the lapel and say, we're paying you too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, this topic is, uh, is deep and wide and you know, I'm glad that you t are with us. I want you to stay tuned to Hard Questions because when we come back, I'm gonna ask these men, what do you do when you're in debt? How do you get out of debt? How do you, if money is that badge of, what did you say? It's, you see it it's a certificate, bit? money is a certificate of good performance. It okay, proves, amen. it amen. proves you served God's other children. Okay, amen. so then we're gonna put that in reverse. If we have a lack of it and we're in debt, then that's a certificate of something else. We're gonna come back, we're gonna find out how we can solve that problem. We'll be right mm. back. Welcome back. We're here with a, a steam panel mm -hmm. and we're talking about money. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about money. We're talking about the power of what money indicates. What does it indicate? And what's God's will in this? And where, how's that relate to debt? How's that relate to your, uh, your lifestyle? Really, it's where we started out at. But I wanted to ask, before we went on the break, I wanted to come back and, and ask this question. So you find yourself, if, if resources, money is an indicator of good decision making, then is it safe to say that debt and, um, and lack is an indicator of bad decisions? Well, yes, it, it, unfortunately it is, and it's a painful thing for, for me and for anybody to acknowledge. But, uh, you know, there's such a thing as bad luck with, with medicine. You know, you, you can have uh, a medical problem, mm -hmm. it's not, not your fault, or God forbid you can have a problem with your family. You can do everything right and have problems with your kids. It's nobody's fault. But over, you know, in 99% of the cases, today's money problems are the result of yesterday's bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, they may be bad decisions I made 25 years ago, but they were bad decisions. But the good thing is it's never too late to change those bad decisions and start, and, and, and first and foremost is beginning to believe mm. that we, we are supposed to work on helping other people. We ought to measure our performance in terms of how other people value it. And God gave us a gift called money with which to do that. Mm -hmm. nice. And I think those decisions, when you begin to say, how do I get out of this situation? And so our church is one of many that people can go to, Financial Peace University with Dave Ramsey, and begin to put a plan of how do I reverse maybe some poor decisions in the past? Because guilt at some point has to you have to move on to say, what can I do now to turn things around? That's a tremendous resource, mm -hmm. is Financial Peace University. How about, how about you, Dr. Well, well, you know, I was going to say that, you know, uh, and there's different views on this, so I'm not sure everybody will agree with me. But, uh, you know, I've heard people say that, you know, when you're in debt, that, you know, you, you need to get out of debt and then start giving to the Lord. And, you know, I would believe that in the midst of being in Amen. debt, that the best thing you can do is continue to be faithful to God Amen. because you know you're you're actually cutting off your, the hand that's feeding you. Yeah. Yeah, but I've heard I, I mean I've sat under teachings and I've heard people tell other people counsel them and say, well you know you should uh, you know until you get out of debt you know you should not give you know your, your to the Lord. But I think that that's the primary thing that you need to do. Let's set the word tithing. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you 100%, Doc. I mean, I've been there many times in my life and, and sometimes, matter of fact, giving to this ministry many, many, many years ago, things weren't looking good for us financially and I started writing out checks. My wife said, what are you doing? I said, I'm giving our way out. Now I know people look and say, oh, come on, but I'm serious. I've done that in my own personal life. I've done it with the church's life. When we went to the church, it was, 
it wasn't looking too good. And we took on more missionaries and we started giving out more money. And then, you know, from the north, south, east, and west. And I know people saying, you know, is he preaching pie in the sky? No, I, I'm just sharing what the word says. Right. Give, right. and it shall be given back. Right. You know, That's and, the will of God that we're talking about. You yeah. Know. So, so, so where does the faith aspect come in? The faith aspect comes in when I say, I trust you, my loving Heavenly Father. I trust you. Instead of me holding on, I trust you for what I, what I have. And, and I trust you to meet the lack of, of what I have. A lot of people have credit card debt. You make me think about that, Pastor Pete, because credit card debt is nothing but an act of faith. That's right. Because you take this piece of plastic and you go buy something that you want with the understanding you don't have the money, or you paid for it in cash, but you use the, the credit card as your instrument of faith. And then sometimes, somehow, you may not even have any clue on how that's going to happen. The average American, I think, has a $20,000 wow. charge card uh, debt. Wow. Somehow that's going to get paid for. And Rabbi, that's just folly. No, it's, it's sheer folly. And I, I, I can't uh, emphasize enough mm -hmm. um, your point, Pastor, that um, Dave Ramsey is a, a believing Christian guy. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. And he's saving the lives of millions of Americans. And literally anybody who is suffering under the burden of debt, go to a church that runs Financial Peace University. Mm -hmm. It's going to change your life. Um, it's 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 tough medicine, but it changes your life. And and on on your you point, up. the the Hebrew word for tithing is exactly the same as the Hebrew word for wealth. Oh, is that right? Making your point, and and you're exactly right. Uh, giving gives you the same high as spending money does without a bill at the end of the month to pay. <laughs> and so, why would you hurt your earning capacity by withholding your gift? And that's why it's a percentage. It's not an absolute amount. No matter how little I've got, 10% is still 10%. It's okay. And so uh, that, that is the avenue. And I think the, the two things to focus on simultaneously, elimination of debt, which mm -hmm. is a sometimes a multi-year program, mm -hmm. might take two or three years. Uh, but at the same time, you've got to be focused on increasing revenue. It's a worthy and a good thing because increasing revenue means you found ways to serve more of God's children. That's right. You know, and I, I would like to say, because you know, we have Dave's, Dave Ramsey's program at our church. We offer Financial Peace University, and he has an expression that he uses. It's called a stupid tax. And, you know, <laughs> and, it's, and it's going back to what we're talking about, the will of God, that if, if we will, you know, govern our finances according to the word of God, mm -hmm. then we won't find ourselves paying those stupid taxes, you know, and those are ones that we make bad decisions, and we end up paying more in, than we want to pay. So, Amen to yeah. that. Yes, exactly. I think one, one thing that's important, especially if you're in a situation where you're in deep debt, and it, it can be very painful. And sometimes we think, well, if I'm sick, I can be, become happy and content if I get better. But really, can you find a happiness and contentment in that situation while you're working towards physical health? Yes. And can you find a peace and contentment in Christ while you're working towards financial health? Yes. So don't postpone right. healthy relationships and relationship with God and say, someday when I get out of debt, right. I'll, I'll be able true. to have some sense of peace or a feeling I'm in the will of God. Well, the moment you decide to head in the right direction, you're in the will of God. Mm. That's really good. It's real good because we can't wait for the solution. We are part of the solution. Yes. And, and to think of what the scripture says, godliness with contentment is great gain. Uh, you know, it's not what I wear, it's not what I drive, of course, you know, and I'm not, you know, but m my relationship with Christ, godliness with contentment, th there's my great gain. It's not my, uh, I'd love to have a, a, a zillion dollars in the, in the bank account, but, but my contentment isn't there. It's in Christ. It's in my relationship with my Lord and Savior. And increasing revenue is something that everybody can do. Right. You've got to stop seeing right. a static situation. How, a, do, you do, a how, good, do, you, how a, do you do that? Well, a good and loving God is an infinite God, mm -hmm. a God that has the capacity to shower abundance if you would stop being your own <laughs> worst enemy. enemy. <laughs> and, um, and you think about it, you know, people do business with people they know, they, people they like, right. people they trust. trust. And, um, and isn't that what God wants us to do? It's not good for man to be alone. That's not just about Adam's matrimonial prospects. It's that God doesn't want any of us to be disconnected from one another. Exactly. Connect with a lot of people, 
and none of us are connecting with as many people as we should do and become trustworthy to those people mm -hmm. and become likable to those people. Well, why should we be surprised that a good and loving God Amen. rewards us for doing exactly what he wants us to do? This is not about love of money. This is not about God wanting you to be rich because I have no idea if he does or if he doesn't. But he does want us to be obsessively preoccupied with the needs and desires Amen. of his other children. Amen. And so there's, there is Amen. the supernatural side, given it shall be given to you. Yeah. But there is the natural side of saying, am I making wise choices? Yes. I mean, the studies have shown pretty similar this. A person with a bachelor's degree in their lifetime earns twice as much as a person with a high school degree. A person with an advanced degree earns twice as much as a person with a bachelor's degree. So to ignore things like right. Right. the power that education, you know, to, that has to open doors and other things, if you're in the situation to do something, you can do, make the right choices that will increase your income, and sometimes dramatically. Mm. Well, as a family, mm -hmm. when you think in terms of a family, mm -hmm. and a family has needs, and Pastor, I like your season analogy. Mm -hmm. yeah. The season is so important that we remember that not all seasons are the same. Mm. Sometimes the seasons change. And as the seasons change, even if your resources don't change, your expenses can shift right. and you can see a season. I guess the point is let's not live in yesterday's season. Right. Let's go right. on to the new season. Yes. And what was true yesterday may not be what God wants to be true today. Mm. But you can't, who was it, Zig Ziglar was it said, you always get what you need by helping other people get what they need. Yeah. Is that some, that's a loose translation right. of what? Yeah, what exactly right. Make what things happen for other people and see how God makes things happen for you. And that's getting in the sweet spot of life, walking in the spirit by being obedient to him. We've got a final question. This is a doozy when we come back. So here it is. Lightning round. Does God care about money? Well, I think if we look at Jesus and we see that he had more to say about money than he did about heaven and prayer, I think God cares about money. I, I think if we take our money and, and literally um, worship God with our money, we'll always have enough money to go ahead. When we're generous with money, it changes the world for Christ. There you go. Yeah. Rabbi. Uh, does he care about money? Does he care about us being wealthy? Uh, that I don't know. But does he care about us caring about his other children? Absolutely. Absolutely, and it shouldn't surprise us that a good and loving God would reward those who care for his other children with the enormous blessing of financial abundance. Because it's, isn't it, isn't it a cycle? You give and you receive. You give and you receive. It's the, we talk about seed time harvest all the time. As you plant, you get a crop. As the crop is harvested, you have more seed. The seed gets planted, there's another crop. It's a cycle that's, you'll see it in nature. We see it now in our, in our springtime here in this area. Like to end the program, thank you guys for a great program. End the program with the scripture. Let's go to Psalms, which says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let me exalt his name forever and forever. From the Psalms 34, 1 through 3. We're so glad that you tuned in to watch the Hard Questions program. And pastors and rabbi, what, what a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you very it much, and it's an honor to be with you. We're kind of in your today. sweet spot. It's kind of your sweet spot. Yeah. We're glad you joined us too. Send your hard questions to CTVN, hard questions at ctvn.org. When you do, who knows? Maybe on our next program, we'll be asking your question. I hope we do.